Well, welcome back to the shop, guys. So I've got these little Puko blades all tempered up. Well, I guess that one's not super little. Great little size there, though. I said little again. Anyway, I've got to do a finish grind on these and clean up the uh, forge surface. And they will be ready for handles, but that's not the only thing we're doing in the shop today. Oh, I forgot to mention that I actually... That's not the only thing I do with these before I put handles on them. I also temper out the spine and the tang for maximum toughness. Working on a few other knives here. Got these uh, nice little Kepart classic design here. Hickory handle scales. Got to finish that one, these up. I'm going to pair these with a couple of the uh, hunter hatchets when I get this batch made over here. I'll show, show you that. This is 10 billets for the hunter hatchet. Just gotta deburr these real quick and they'll be ready to start forging. This will be a video all by itself on forging the hunter hatchet, so stay tuned for that too. And I haven't shown these or talked about them in a video yet. Tomahawk handles, so I purchased just 10 to start with tomahawk handles from Crazy Crow Trading Post. Some of you guys are probably familiar with them. They sell a lot of um, like period reenactment, you know, I guess accurate uh, accoutrement, tools, clothing, etc., etc. Anyway, they have these hickory. So you're probably asking, why would I buy pre-made tomahawk handles instead of making them from scratch like all of my other axe, hatchet, and hammer handles? Well, that's a very good question. And the reason is, is because I cannot find hickory plank thicker than four quarter which is right about one inch is what that's supposed to be this requires a thicker piece of wood as you can see here so for example here's an axe and here's the the tomahawk handle and you can see this is thicker so in order for me to make that I don't have the width on the on the uh, plank and if for those who aren't familiar with the difference between tomahawks and hatchets. Here's the main difference. Here's the main design difference. A, an axe or a, a hatchet, which is a small axe, I guess, the handle is inserted from the bottom of the head and then wedged at the top to secure it. Whereas a tomahawk is tapered, and not so much down through here, but uh, more aggressively tapered through here and the, uh, the head is designed so that the tomahawk handle slides down from the top and then wedges itself in somewhere around here because of the taper and then you have a secure handle and obviously the, the uh, shape of the eye on the tomahawk has to match that of the uh, handle or vice versa um, that's, that's the difference and uh, one is not necessarily better than the other by any means they're just different designs and so that's what we have to work with. But I'm excited about uh, getting, getting some tomahawks built because I'm going, to, uh, I'm going to build it with a bit of a pull, so a nice, nice crisp pull on the back so that it can be used for uh, hammering, striking, whatever, and then a, and a good tomahawk bit on the front. So you could throw it, but it will also be a useful trail tool. So enough talk, let's get to work on something because there's plenty to do and you didn't uh, tune in to see me talk probably.
Okay, now that we've got these ground, they are not completely done. I'm going to go back over this bevel and just tighten it up and uh, with a with a finer grit. This is only 80 grit, so these are not done yet. So we'll do a we'll do a 240 grit and got to clean that one up a little bit obviously. But the next step here is I'm going to go ahead and wire brush these off so we have some clean bright steel, remove the scale, and then we can go ahead and temper out the spine and the tang. Since the history of bladesmithing, people have been uh, figuring out ways to achieve very different characteristics within the context of the same tool. So what I mean by that is this knife, when we're finished with it here, is going to have a nice hard edge that will hold hold an edge well and uh, can be resharpened and the rest of the knife the tang the spine will be soft enough that it would not make a good edge and yet that's how we're going to achieve the toughness of the overall blade that you would not have if you left the blade the same hardness as the edge. Now would it be tough enough? Yes, I believe so. Based on my testing and so forth, but we can make it tougher. This is one way to achieve that result and of course there are other ways including laminate blades and uh, different ways of forging blades that include combining different types of steel but in this case we are using one piece of steel and coaxing different characteristics from the same piece of steel in different parts of the blade and that is the purpose of differential tempering which is what we're doing here I'm going to go ahead and temper out the tang completely so that at a later point we can work with it at the end of the handle. I'll actually end up spheridizing the end of this tang eventually so that I can peen it over on the end cap of our knife. But for now a full, fully tempered out tang will be adequate. And then this blade is ready for final grinding, polishing, and then a handle. All right, well these blades are close to being finished. We just have to clean up the finish and then they'll be done, or ready for handles, I should say. So 
I think I mentioned that I put a micro bevel on my scan. Well, maybe that was the previous video, I don't remember, but I do put a micro bevel on my Scandi grind knives, which makes them not truly Scandi grind. They're pseudo Scandi. The way these are ground right now, they're a true Scandi, but they have a heavy burr on them, and you would have to clean up the edge, you know, hone it down. A true Scandi knife has one angle, so this facet that you see on both sides travels from here down to zero degrees. That's your edge, and that's also your, it is both your primary and secondary bevel, if you will. This provides an excellent edge for woodworking as well as, of course, uh, you know, myriad other tasks. The inherent drawback to that is that there is less material right here at the edge on a Scandi, true Scandi grind blade than there is with a um, more commonly known blade that has a primary and secondary bevel. So what I do is I put a micro bevel, and by micro bevel I do mean micro bevel. I put it on with a hone. So there is an ever so slight primary bevel that provides a, a huge extra amount in my opinion. Much for the for the for the size of the micro bevel it really bolsters the uh, edge strength and yet maintains most of that um, renowned and well loved Scandi grind characteristic when you're actually using the blade. So that's how I like to do it. And let's get these things finished up. All right, these guys are ready for some handles. That'll be that'll be fun. I like to put different, uh, you know, use like several, two or three different pieces of nice wood and put a copper or brass bolster and pommel on there, stuff like that. Sometimes I do a hidden tang where the wood finishes it out, but I'm not sure what I'm gonna do on all these. Just one of them's in order, like I said, and then the rest are a blank canvas so that's fun but look at that I mean that's it just never gets old it just never gets old look at that forged steel you know a purpose built simple you know it's got an edge ground on there it, it just doesn't get old it just doesn't get old my goal with these blades as with all my knives is to create a metallurgically superior product. Something that, well, given the specific steel that it's made out of, will perform to the greatest extent possible for that steel. 5200 steel, good high carbon, 1% carbon. We've talked a lot about 5200 steel. Anyway, appreciate you guys watching. Finished up this stage of the process for these blades and it's time to move on to something else. So with that, we'll see you on the next video. Thanks for watching.